Hello, hello. Thank you for coming and checking me out. My name is Jennifer and this is Jen the Bookworm. Today I am bringing to you a um, mid-year freakout tag. Um, I, it's only about towards the end of June, so this is a something that would normally be done in July and maybe it will actually be shown in July, but I'm filming it at the end of June. I have read some really good books this month and uh, I wanted to check in with um, my progress for this year so far uh, and I hope that you will find that entertaining. Uh, before I get started, I'd like to say thank you to all of you who have subscribed to my channel. I have about 90 people subscribed now and I'm really trying to make a push for 100 people. Uh, at the end of this month will be one year I've been with YouTube and if I can get a hundred uh, followers then I would appreciate it very much so please subscribe if you know anyone who might be interested in my content please share my video with them um, I appreciate you very much so let's get into the mid-year freakout tag so the first prompt is best book you've read so far this year I mean, that is so difficult to choose. I'm one of those, I don't, I'm not good at that. I'm not good at that, but I did manage to narrow it down so far. I believe the best book I've read so far is The Hero of Ages by Brandon Sanderson. It's the second book in the Miss Ford series. I feel like it was the best book that I read this year because after I got done with it, I felt like so energized. So my mind was somewhat blown. Um, I did a, a reaction video to it, which I wish I had done the reaction video right after I had read it, right after I'd finished it, but I slept on it and, uh, because it was late. I finished the book around midnight or whatnot and it was late and I had to get up the next morning, but I kind of wish I had just filmed the video with my raw reaction. But I, I loved it so much. And it, honestly, it was a book that sort of started to make me doubt my ability to write myself. And I'm sure that that was never, a, ever, ever a goal for Brandon Sanderson or any writer, really. But it's just his books are so layered and his stories are so good. Um, so I really loved Hero of Ages uh, by Brandon Sanderson. That was my, my favorite book so far. Um, so the second prompt is the best sequel I've read so far this year. I have to say the best sequel I've read so far this year was Before They Were Hanged by Joe Abercrombie. Now, I really love the first Lost series. I've read it for the first time this year. And I was somewhat prepared for this, but I wasn't prepared for it. I didn't know how good I would find the first Lost series, and I really loved it. But the the first book being mostly character driven, less on, you know, light on the plot side. The second book really had a lot of plot and it continued on with the same characters. And I loved those characters the first time around. I loved them the second time around. But also the plot itself was just, or the multiple plots that, that were explored were really good. And Joe Abercrombie has such a talent for taking these tropes that we are love that we love and that we're used to and turning them on their head he subverted so many tropes in this in this uh sequel it was so good uh i wasn't ready for any of it and i loved it so uh before they were hanged uh by joe abercrombie the next prompt is new releases uh that you haven't read but want to um so i have two um, one of them is kind of cheating. Um, the Bound and Broken series by Ryan Cahill. I really want to read it. And the third book is, was out in 2023. So that's why it's in release. I really want to read that series. I've heard lots of good things about it. I haven't been able to fit it in yet, but that's one that I really want to get into, um, and read sooner rather than later. The second one is The Way of a Dun by Philip Chase. Uh, it just came out this year. The second one is on its way of co to coming out. Um, but I'm waiting on the audio. I really want to listen to the audio. Um, our uh, very own booktuber, uh, Alan from Library of Alexandria, will be doing the audiobook, uh, which I think is just awesome to um, 
to get, you know, somebody from the booktubing community uh, who can and who has a talent to do something like that. Uh, so I'm, I'm waiting on that. I prefer audiobook anyway, but I'm just I was very curious to see how Alan will do. So those are the books that um, are new releases that I haven't yet read, but I'm really looking forward to doing so. Um, most anticipated release for the second half of the year. This is kind of hard for me because I don't really pay much attention to new releases. There's only been a couple that I've paid attention to, like when Tress and the Emerald Sea came out. I, you know, paid attention to that. And then there's um, the second book that has got such a big title, I can't even remember it all, but it's, it's like the medieval guide to something or nothing. It's the second secret book that uh, Brandon Sanderson came out with. Um, these are some new releases that, you know, have been on my radar or, ha you know, got on my radar, but I am s not well read yet. I have lots of, of stuff to read that isn't new to anyone else, but it's new to me. So I don't really pay a lot of attention to what's coming out, but uh, I do know that in September, uh, Stephen King is coming out with a book, Holly, which I, um, I'm really looking forward to. I, I really, I got introduced to this character, Holly, in um, his book, The Outsider, uh, which I recently read and really liked. And based off of that, bought the Bill Hodges trilogy that she's also in, and then she's getting her own book in September. So I'm looking forward to that. So I guess that qualifies as a new release uh, in the second half of the year that I'm looking forward to. Uh, so the biggest disappointment, I mean, some book has to make the list and I feel kind of bad saying it because I didn't hate the book, um, but Neverwhere by Neil Gaiman. I don't hate Neil Gaiman. I don't hate the book, but I felt like there was a lot of potential there that maybe just his writing style um, he didn't go in the direction I thought he was going to go into or in the directions that I thought he could have gone into or whatever. Um, I felt like it was just a little too weird for me. I like weird somewhat. Um, and I, so I've read some of his books before. Well, I've read one of his books before, uh, Coraline. I read Coraline and I really enjoyed Coraline. I didn't mind that it was weird though, because it was a kid's book and it to a certain extent, some kids' books just are meant to be weird. I still want to read more Gaiman to see uh, if there's something out there that he writes that will really resonate with me, but this one just wasn't the book for me. It doesn't mean it's a bad book, it just means it wasn't the book for me. So that, that was my biggest disappointment so far this year. My biggest surprise is the next prompt. And that one I have to say was The Blade Itself by Joe Abercrombie. Now I already mentioned the second book in the series was my favorite second book for this year. Uh, uh, the Blade Itself was so unexpected and so good. I knew, I knew nothing. I, what I knew was uh, it's supposed to be grimdark and that's what I knew. And so, um, oh, I think I heard, I think I heard about Glockta. Uh, and if you've read the book, you know who that is. And so I think I heard about him, but what I heard about him was that everyone loved him. And so I wasn't really sure if I would love him because sometimes I don't love what everyone else loves, or sometimes I resist loving what everyone else loves. I don't know. So, um, uh, I was not prepared to like him as much as I did. And honestly, I liked all of the characters. Um, I'd have to say Glockta was my favorite, but, and Logan probably a close second. Um, but there's lots of good characters in this book. And I am a very character driven reader, very character driven story person. I, if, a um, if a story has a crap plot to it, or maybe even no plot to it, um, I'm still okay as long as the character development and the characters are good. To a point. I guess that there there might become a point where no plot at all would be upsetting or frustrating or not what I like, but 
I really enjoyed this one and it was mostly character stuff. It was very light on plot. Um, each character had their own plot, so they all had their own thing that they were working towards. But there wasn't really an overarching plot until towards the end. There was a little effort to stitch them together. Um, it was so good that I was reading it as a part of a, a readathon, and it was so good that I reworked my readathon so I could read the second book right away. And then after that, I read the third book outside of the readathon. Uh, and finished them all up in a like a less than two week period. It was really, really good. That's the first Lost series by Joe Abercrombie. I recommend it. So, uh, no surprise here. The next prompt is uh, favorite new author. <laughs> so Joe Ab Abercrombie. I mean, I just spent you know five minutes raving on the guy, and for good reason. I he's my next favorite. Um, author the one that I'm kind of most excited to read I'm more excited to read some of his books than some of Brandon Sanderson's books right now though I have to say Brandon Sanderson he almost lost his place to Joe Abercrombie as my favorite um writer but then I finished Miss Bourne and he brought it back for me and I really really like but I like both of them so uh, Joe Abercrombie I think he's a an instant buy for me. Like I'm gonna read everything he wrote just to experience it all. So I really, really like him. If you can't tell, uh, the next prompt is newest fictional crush. I don't. I don't guess I understand. I don't know. I don't have a crush on fictional people. Um, it's not that I don't understand. I shouldn't have said it like that because I used to have crushes on fictional people like, you know, Spike from Buffy the Vampire Slayer or whatever, but um, none of my the books that I've been reading has inspired me to develop a crush on a fictional character. Um, and But I mean, I haven't been reading a lot of romance books or the books I've been reading haven't had tons of romance in it. And um, I would never, ever, as much as I love Joe Abercrombie and his books, I would never ever get a crush on any of his characters because it I because if you if you know you know if you've read a Joe Abercrombie sex scene that is the most disgusting and real and weird and true sex scene descriptions <laughs> I've ever come across is bad. It's just it's just okay it's like maybe dial it back a little bit because leave some romance in there for somebody <laughs> but anyway um so no no crushes but uh but enjoying you know enjoying the reading anyway but no crushes uh the next prompt is my newest favorite character and i have to say glockta just based off of of everything i've been reading glockta from the first law series by joe abercrombie and i'm not going to keep going on and on a uh, book that made me cry, Ghost Story by Jim Butcher. So part of my May, um, kind of mood read May that I did was wanting to do some binge reading. And uh, there are a few series that are as bingeable as the Dresden Files series. Very bingeable books. And I read three of them in May. And Ghost Story was... Um, was one of them and it was very touching in places very it's it's sort of and I don't want to spoil anything for anyone but it's sort of like when your character makes certain choices or or you make certain choices for your character even though it makes for a great epic conclusion to a story sometimes authors don't explore the aftermath and I really feel like ghost story was let's explore the aftermath of changes uh, which was the book before it and there were some very um touching scenes in there and and a little bit of heartbreaking scenes in there and I I admit I did cry 
So um, good on Jim Butcher for that, because I think that's um, um, that's something when you can make your your audience feel that. All right. So the next prompt is a book that made me happy. Um, a book that made me happy. I don't know if this counts, but um, I put the city of of the lost by Kelly Armstrong. I know I've spoken about it a couple of times. And honestly, when I first read this book, I didn't think it was necessarily something that would get mentioned multiple times on my channel, uh, but now it has. But really, I picked this book because I got to read it with my sister. We did a, a vlog together, um, uh, which is on my channel. You should look for it if you haven't seen it. Uh, it was a lot of fun to read the book with her, to get her opinions, to agree or disagree with her. Uh, we went out to breakfast and did like, you know, a whole bookish weekend and it was so awesome. And that was the, this is the first book in the series. We ended up reading like seven books that month um, instead of the 24 hour reading challenge that we did. We read like seven books, but um I, I really enjoyed this time that I got to spend with her and so the book made me happy and every time I see the book it makes me happy because I remember the time I got to spend with my sister reading it. Um, the next prompt is most beautiful book that you've bought or that you've received and so I do you know as you know all my reading on audiobook and um and Kindle. That doesn't mean that they don't have covers. They have covers. Um, but I don't often, I don't know, I don't often associate the cover with the book as much because I'm not accessing it traditionally. But I, re I just recently bought uh, Priory of the Orange Tree by um, uh, Samantha Shannon. And that cover is a gorgeous cover. It's a gorgeous cover. And um, I honestly, I bought the book um, because, because of its cover years ago on audio, on, um, sorry, on Kindle, I bought it because of the cover. And so I recently got it on audiobook uh, so that I can read it easier and maybe do some immersion reading. And, um, but anyway, it's a, a, a gorgeous, um, cover. I really like that. The last prompt is what books do you need to read by the end of the year? And there are many. I don't think that you're surprised, but if you are, sorry, there are many. <laughs> um, I really want to read and, and hope to start reading, uh, the faithful and the fallen series. Now I've read malice. If you've been around, you know, I've read malice. Um, I read it in December. Uh, of last year, but I started so many series all at the same time that it's sort of a blur and I haven't gotten a chance to read the next book in the series um, yet. So I kind of feel like I would benefit from rereading Malice and then moving on. And luckily, uh, some of the, the people in the Grimoire Discord are going to be reading um, The Faithful and the Fallen. They're going to start in July. Um, and um, th they hope to be partnering up with some other people to uh, hopefully uh, make a, a good um, a good group of people to to read these books. And I'm hoping to join in with them uh, while we do while we read these books. And I'm looking forward to it a lot because I really re liked Malice when I read it. So I'm really looking forward to continuing on. So that's um, some books that I need to get read by the end of the year. I also need to finish um, A Song of Ice and Fire. I've got all of them read except for A Dance with Dragons. Um, and I had kind of a, a hiccup with my Libby. Um, my library card was just a temporary library card. I haven't, library card. I haven't gotten to the library to update it. I need to do that so that I can update my Libby so that I can uh, borrow the book. Um, I don't really want to buy the books. There is a fan um, audio file out there, um, which I might check that out instead. If I can't get it downloaded onto my phone though, it's something that I can only do when I'm at my computer. 
which is not the worst thing ever. I'm at my computer quite a lot, but so I might read it that way. Um, I actually have the book on Kindle so I can immersion read or whatnot. So I'm, I'm looking into, um, and looking forward to finishing up that series, um, of what's written so far anyway. And, um, so that's one more I got to do. And then I have all the rest of the standalones in the First Law world and the Age of Madness trilogy by Joe Abercrombie. I'd like to get those read and get caught up on all that. And I'd like to get that done this year. Now, if I don't get it all done this year, okay, but I would like to. Those are high priority books for me right now. Um, I feel like the, the, it's more high priority than even like reading all through all the Brandon Sanderson books, because I'm, I feel like I'm so late on Brandon Sanderson that it doesn't matter. I mean, he's going to be coming out with the next Stormlight book, but not until 2025. So I have some time to get caught up on that. I have some time to, you know, read some of the other books. So I'm not so worried about that. I just, for whatever reason though, really into the first law world and I'd really like to read more of those. So that's what I have. Um, the only thing that's left is to tag some people, but at this point, I don't know, it's such a, a popular tag, um, that I think I'm going to say, if you'd like to do this tag, tag your it. Um, if you don't want to do the full tag, but you want to answer some of the questions or all of the questions even in the comment section, go for it. I would love to hear your answers to the questions. Um, but you know, I, I feel like this is a tag that a lot of booktubers are going to do with or without being tagged. So I'm going to just leave it to them to decide whether or not they want to do this tag. So that was it. That's the, the mid year freak out for 2023. I hope you enjoyed this tag and I hope that, um, it wasn't too boring to listen to me ramble on about Joe Abercrombie, but I mean, I got to give credit where credit is due. And, and when you read a book or an author or a series that just makes you feel so glad to be reading, you got to celebrate that. And so I do. Um, so I hope that you enjoyed this. Uh, please leave me comments, please like, and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, please share if you think this is something that anyone would have any interest in. Um, I would appreciate anything that you can do to help boost my channel, um, help me reach more people, um, and help me get to 100 subscribers. I'm still trudging along trying to get to that goal. So thank you very much for the time that you've spent with me, and I hope that you had a great rest of your day.